Today, I'm going to explain an episode from the series Nightmare and Dreamscapes called Battleground, released in the year 2006. The protagonist of the movie is a hitman named Renshaw. In the opening scene, he parks his car in front of Hans Morris's mansion. Morris is the president of a million-dollar toy company and Renshaw's next target. He is in the storeroom, looking through the shelves of toys until he finds the one he is looking for, a green fairy. He brings the toy to his study room and stands by the window. Renshaw sees him through it and gets ready to execute his plan. He loads his gun and puts on a face mask so the cameras won't capture his face. Then, to trick the security guard at the entrance, he uses a phone as bait. A countdown starts on the phone. The guard panics and rushes outside to throw it away. Taking the opportunity, Renshaw attacks him and shoots him dead. The silencer attached to his gun suppresses the noise of the gunshot so Morris wouldn't be alerted. Then, he steals the keys from the guard's uniform and walks into the security room with no trouble. After disabling the CCTV cameras, he confidently takes his mask off and walks to the study room. On his way, he comes across another security guard, who he kills with little to no effort. Following that, he walks into the room and kills Morris with two bullets to his chest and one to his forehead. After making sure he is dead, Renshaw picks up the green fairy from earlier as a souvenir for himself. He also notices a picture of Morris's mother on the table with a note written on the bottom. Renshaw doesn't think much of it and leaves. In the next scene, he is on an airplane flying back home. He texts his client about the successful murder and enjoys the ride. A passenger sitting beside him asks him for a piece of gum. When he opens his bag to get her one, she notices the toy fairy inside. She thinks it is strange for a grown man to carry a kid's toy, but doesn't voice her opinion. When Renshaw lands at the airport, the news about Morris's murder has spread across the nation. On his way out, he notices that a girl has a doll in her backpack that is similar to the one he noticed in Morris's room. He doesn't think much of it until something more strange happens. He notices a green toy on the table at the reception of his apartment building. The toy also happened to be at Morris's table at the time of his death. After returning to the penthouse, Renshaw safely keeps the green fairy on a display table. It has several other souvenirs like money, a pen, glasses, and so on each collected from a person he has killed. Renshaw falls asleep on the sofa while replying to emails. In the middle of the night, he is woken up by the doorbell. He thinks it is strange and checks the front door camera before opening the door. Outside, the receptionist is standing with a box. When he doesn't open the door, she simply keeps the box on the floor and walks away. He then brings it in and carefully places it on the kitchen counter. The note on the box is addressed to him, but has no information about the sender. However, there is a signature on the bottom that looks awfully similar to Morris's mother's signature that we had seen in the photo frame on the night of his death. Renshaw deliberates if he should throw the box away, but curiosity gets the best of him. He carefully opens the wrapper and finds a box full of toys. It has been sent from Morris's company and says that there are bonus surprises inside. At first, Renshaw checks the box to see if it is a trap. When he finds nothing of such sort, he opens it and sees plastic soldiers, guns, and tanks. He brings out one of the toys and inspects it, but finds nothing suspicious. Later, the box drops off the counter by itself. Renshaw clearly remembers it not being on the edge, so he goes closer to check. To his utter surprise, the toy soldiers from inside the box are missing. Then, more strange things start happening around the house. The curtains move on their own, and the lights switch off suddenly. On checking, Renshaw realizes that someone cut the cable to the lights. All of a sudden, a soldier from below the table stabs his toes with a sharp gun. It is clear to Renshaw that the toy soldiers from the box are behind all this. When he bends down to check, they start firing at him. Although the bullets only do him little harm, he retreats in shock and fear. Soon, they hit him with an explosive that burns his pants. Renshaw registers that the soldiers are tiny but very dangerous. As they continuously fire at him, he manages to run to the bathroom and lock himself in. 
His knee is severely injured and he has many bullets stuck to his skin that are harmless but still hurt. Then, Renshaw uses a hand mirror to check what's going on in the living room. To his dismay, they are firing at the light bulbs so the room would go dark. When the soldiers notice him, they throw a cannonball towards him that breaks his mirror. Agitated, Renshaw goes to his room from the other door and retrieves his gun. He uses it to threaten them and get to the kitchen. From the cabinet, he brings out a rifle and showers them with several rounds of bullets. Suddenly, everything goes silent as the soldiers back off in fear. Renshaw uses the opportunity to move the couch cushions so they wouldn't have a place to hide. When they make no more noise, he flips the entire couch over and sees their dead bodies lying beneath. The surviving ones help the others and get them on a jeep. Renshaw watches in awe, not being able to believe his eyes. When he registers that they're about to run away, he steps on as many soldiers as he can. Some continue firing at him, but when Renshaw shoots them, the vibration from a single bullet knocks them out. However, the attack doesn't stop there. Three army helicopters emerge from under the table and launch towards him. They attack him with a cannonball, but he somehow dodges it. Yet, they overpower him by showering him with missiles. Renshaw quickly rushes to his bedroom and locks himself in. He looks into the mirror and is horrified to see many cuts and bruises on his face. He puts alcohol on it and dresses the wound to his best. Before he knows it, a huge ball bangs on the bathroom door, making a hole through it. A helicopter enters the room and continues attacking him. Having had enough, Renshaw catches it with a towel and bangs the toy to the ground. Following that, he flushes the remains down the toilet, but the soldiers refuse to give up. At last, he drops a plugged-in hairdryer into the water and finally kills them. He decides to spend the rest of the night in the bathroom, where his safety is ensured. Later, he stitches the wound on his thighs, even though it is very painful. A few hours later, a shadow appears beneath the door. A soldier from outside leaves a note for Renshaw, asking him to surrender. The man is amazed by the toy's smartness. He, in turn, writes, screw you, on the paper. When he goes to put it back, he realizes that it's a trap. A group of soldiers with tanks are ready to fire at him. The impact makes many more holes in the door, leaving Renshaw in the range of fire. To save his life, he climbs outside the window but can hardly escape from the 14th floor of the building. He somehow manages to carefully walk towards the balcony, but just then, another helicopter attacks him. Because he is on the edge, the soldiers are seconds away from pushing him off. At that very moment, Renshaw fires a single shot that crashes the helicopter. When he gets back on the balcony, he finally sighs of relief. Inside, more soldiers are pointing the cannon at the window, waiting for him to return. A while later, he thinks of a plan. He distracts the soldiers using a rubber duck in the swimming pool. Then, he attacks them with a fire extinguisher from the other side. As they try to run away, another group of soldiers catches his attention. They circle around him on a jeep while firing repeatedly. Renshaw uses a lighter and a spray to create a flamethrower and burn them alive. He even gets a knife and chops their bodies into pieces out of anger. Following that, he returns to the group that is fighting the fire extinguisher and smashes them with a box. At last, all the soldiers are killed. Renshaw lies down with the burnt plastic and moves it around. To make sure all of them are dead, he counts them and matches them to the number on the box. When the numbers match, he is finally relieved, but he forgets to consider the bonus surprise that was written on the back of the box. He drinks and takes a swim to relax. Suddenly, someone cuts his wrist from inside the water. He instantly comes outside and sees that he needs immediate stitching. He uses a needle and a thread and stitches the cut to the best of his abilities. Then, he decides to leave the penthouse so the remaining soldiers wouldn't attack him again. But what he doesn't know is that the trouble has followed him inside the elevator. Suddenly, the lights go out and the buttons panel breaks, ensuring that Renshaw doesn't open the elevator door at his will. He uses a flashlight to look around but sees no one. When the panel flashes again, he notices a single commando inside it. 
The toy runs out of the elevator through a missing ceiling panel. As Renshaw follows him behind, he notices that the elevator is stuck and he has no way to escape. As a last resort, he jumps on top of a second elevator. He removes a ceiling panel and enters inside, happy that he is finally safe. But his happiness doesn't last long when he realizes that the commando has followed him inside. The toy uses a knife to stab Renshaw repeatedly, but because of the size difference, it does him little to no harm. Renshaw then catches the commando and puts him in between the elevator doors. The doors crush his head, killing him at last. Renshaw smiles at the toy's headless body, but soon discovers that it is attached to an explosive. The bomb detonates, killing him in the process. We see a sticker attached to the toy box that says the box consists of a commando and a thermonuclear weapon as bonus gifts. Somewhere else, the stolen toy fairy moves on her own. That was all from the video.